What is good? We're back. Second week of preseason is wrapped up. We're sitting here Sunday night. Just watched the Bo Nix touchdown drive. So we'll jump into that in just a minute. We got Big Co over there. What's good, Big Co? Oh, man, we're so close to that Thursday night game with Chiefs versus Ravens. Mm. I can taste it. It's yeah, a couple more weeks of preseason here. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just Jones. I'm just Jones for some some week one, baby. Yeah, we're 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 inching closer. So a couple of injury notes to start off. Um, obviously, JJ McCarthy with the meniscus out for the year. Um, so that's a that's a little bit of a bummer. I was I was hoping that you would not see a whole lot of JJ McCarthy this year, but I didn't want to see it happen that way. Um, not because I, I dislike JJ, but just because I felt like, hey, just let him hang out for a little while. And if things aren't going well in week eight, maybe you throw him in. But just let him sit for a minute. No, no rush here. We don't know how good the Vikings are going to be, and we don't want to put him in a bad situation. I think it's more than a little bit of a bummer just because he's not there. He'll be there, you know, in the meetings and all that stuff. He'll get the mental reps. But I thought, you know, just that first preseason game, we would see him a little yeah. earlier than even than we wanted to. Then I, I was, I was kind of pro let him sit too. But uh, you know, between potential for the team to be not necessarily awesome or just that post bye week rookie plug in. We're not going to get any of that. And so that's that's kind of a bummer for sure. But a year long injury, it's not something that should have any type of effect on him moving forward. So, you know, we'll we'll see a, a more pre- mentally prepared for the NFL, you know, platform next yeah. year. You yeah, know. they'll have him in the building. He'll be around. He'll, he'll probably resume throwing, you know, at some point in the, you know, way sooner to be with the Vikings than than he was in this go round. And I thought he already looked pretty, pretty good in his in his first debut there. So bummer that we didn't get to see a little bit more to for that to grow on for sure. One silver lining there is you do gain an extra roster spot right now with JJ McCarthy, right? You get to throw him in the IR. That opens up a whole other, you know, if it was cut downs or if you know you get a you get a free waiver claim now, FFPC, you sure. know. You throw him in the what you maybe you weren't on the uh you couldn't figure out anybody else to cut and you you couldn't yeah. get that first round of waivers you know s- small silver lining you might bronze get lining that's a right. bronze lining right <laughs> like, there sure you know stings um, too much to be a silver lining but yes yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point yeah so then obviously uh Jalen Warren had a hamstring injury yesterday so that it doesn't seem terribly severe redraft people and maybe buyers beware dynasty people I don't think it's a huge deal although. He is getting, you know, he's not old, but this could have been a season that that could have been really huge for the Warren kind of hype people. Definitely. Um, the hamstring's a tricky one because if he goes in week one and it's too soon, maybe you get a re-injury and it nags all season long. You know, stock up Najee in a contract right. year. I think this system with Arthur Smith is really going to benefit them, and I think they would feed off of each other because there's going to be a lot of work to go around on the ground because I don't think they have figured out this quarterback situation. I don't know how much better it was from last year anyway. You know, well, definitely not those that this sec this last week of preseason right here that was a pretty pitiful showing from Russell Wilson. So it didn't look good, but yeah, it, if you're a Jalen Warren dynasty guy right now, you're just wanting them to hold him out an extra week. Yeah, right. If, if you'll be you'll be you'll be just fine if you don't see him till week three or week four if he comes back and he's right. The last thing you need is a reaggravation. He's out for six weeks. That's yeah. the last thing you need. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, let's uh, let's jump into this week. Not as much action as the last few weeks as far as rookie performances. And, and we'll talk some other things besides rookie, but we're mostly going to be based on rookies here uh, today. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. If you listen on the pod, five-star review. I watched the first few drives of Bo Nix, and then I just came up here at, at the touch after the touchdown drive. He was eight for nine for 80 yards and a touchdown. I don't know where he's at right now. Let me refresh this screen. I know it's the preseason. Things are vanilla. They're keeping things vanilla. But I just it seems like they found they found what they need in Knicks. At least, you know, maybe this season isn't going to be all roses, uh, but sure. He just looks calm, cool, collected back there. I wasn't in love with Knicks coming out, but I thought the fit has was outstanding. Everything just looks really comfortable and natural uh, out there for the plays that Denver's running and uh, Knicks kind of executing it, uh, kind of running around. There was a play that got called back for a touchdown where, where he was over the line. So, you know, good moving around, good keeping the eyes downfield, maybe a little bit lack of awareness of where that line needed to be to, to where he could have drugged the back foot. And regardless, it was, a, it was a nice play to, for him to scramble around, keep eyes downfield and, and, and throw it into the end zone. 
didn't count, but then he came back down. Uh, they kicked the field goal there, came back down, had a great drive, a nice big third down pickup, then another nice throw to Cortland Sutton, and then a little action uh, to the right and a touchdown to Tim Patrick. Um, just seeds. Everything was just nice, clean, yeah. direct throws. Uh, so I'm I'm loving what I'm seeing from Bo Nix uh, out there. I've, I've certainly moved him up a tier in, in my rankings, my rookie rankings, Bo Nix is, is going to have some solid weeks. I think here uh, throughout the uh, regular season, I, I, I think he's a perfect fit for, for Sean Payton. The preseason hasn't shown me any different. I know it's the preseason and there's been plenty of guys who crush the preseason and then stink, but uh, well, I'm not looking for you to necessarily crush statistically. I'm looking for the things you, I'm looking for how you operate. Right. Right. And, and that it looks good. Yeah, well, you know, even week one, maybe getting out of the pocket a little early here or there, but looking good doing that, you mm -hmm. know, um, and it could be the last thing you want is that rookie quarterback that comes out playing against the backups or however these matchups are in preseason because you never really know what coaches are going to be having their priorities on that week. Every team's different. One team might have their starters in there against the other team's backups, et cetera. Right. But at least we're not saying, well, he needs more time. He obviously needs more time, but that's not what you lead off with. What you're leading off here is he looks pretty poised and he looks this and he looks mm -hmm. that, you know, m might be getting out a little bit early here and there, but he's obviously very fluid. He's, he's, he's confident on the move. And so, and especially in today's NFL, being able to stretch it out and move side to side with your quarterback is huge and makes the defense stress out a little bit. Really, I, I, you know, Denver Broncos fans are the big winner here and Sean Payton needed this. He needed this, I think, from a pro public standpoint. I mean, you know, a, a lot of people are kind of, you know, you you and Jason, you know, obviously are, are kind of, you know, over him. And uh, I wasn't over him yet, but I was just like, you know, hey, we need to see something. And right. this is big for the Broncos moving forward, like you said. And, and Bo Nix did not, uh, they went to Stidham after that. So he doesn't have any further stats since you stopped watching that game to come up here and record. So, uh, yeah, good for, good for the Broncos, good for Bo Nix, and real good for, Sean Payton's probably short-term future as a co coach of that team. Yeah. Uh, Tim Patrick finally healthy and out there after they paid him and he's been hurt. And uh, so it seems like, you know, nice, nice stat line for him today, four for four, 30 yards and a touchdown, you know, Dulcich got involved. Uh, Javante Williams caught a pass. McLaughlin caught a pass. Sutton caught a pass. So all the guys who we presume are going to be the starters out there. I think all the Javante Williams smoke was just that smoke. Uh, Javante Williams mm -hmm. is going to be the one a in this offense. McLaughlin can be the Sproles type guy in this offense. I believe you've mentioned that before big co and, and, you know, going to get some other opportunities and some run, but I mean, Javante is going to be the engine that, that steams this train, him and Nick's and, and then Javante's or, uh, Jaleel is going to be a nice change of pace. He can do a lot of different things for him, can catch some passes, but Javante is going to catch a bunch of passes too. Um, so I think Absolutely. all that was for nothing. And if you got the dip on Javante, good for you. I think it's going to really, really work out this season, especially if Knicks can just be any assemblance of a reasonably decent quarterback. Agreed. All right, let's uh, let's keep it moving. Not much happening on the Packers side. They they saw everything they need. They they know what they got over there. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're just like, hey, don't let anybody get hurt before yeah. week one. Yeah. Another big winner from this weekend uh, is probably Michael Penix. You know, he's so good that them boys were just like, hey, we're out for the next two games. Is that that's the old grandma's boy? Is that what's high score mean? Is that good? Did I break it? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, some people are like, what are they talking about? What are they doing? Why are they not letting him play? I don't know. I probably might let him play. But also, if he goes out there and continues to play really well, you have to answer the questions of whether or not you're what, what are we doing with Kirk Cousins? Right. Yeah. So, or, it, or if he goes out there and plays bad, then you have to answer the questions of the mm -hmm. draft pick. So really yeah. it's a no win situation, right? The second for the Falcons. Everyone he's already thinks they're idiots. Yeah. He, they, he's obviously been playing very well and the, and the locals and the beat writers and everything are super happy with him. Uh, so like you said, either a, he goes out there and plays great and causes a stir with Kirk cousins. Or B, he goes out there and look, doesn't look too good for for one reason or another, and then causes a stir. You know, you don't need any the, any further distractions. There's enough distractions just to get an NFL team ready to go every week. You know, so if he goes and plays bad, then they talk crap about the draft pick. If they talk, if he plays great, then there's any there any further chatter in the locker room is not needed right now. Yeah, but uh, stock up Michael Penix for sure. That's if you've been messing with us, you know, that's been been my guy conductor of the train. And I, I love it. Anytime I get a chance to uh, talk a little Penix and, and jab some some haters, I, I, I like it.
Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, next guy on the list here, Eagles Pats. That was a Thursday game. I thought Drake May was really good in this game. The stat line doesn't show it. You know, I saw Jax Falcone saying how easy the pass to Baker was. Anybody could do that. And I'm like, all right, man. You know, I saw another guy talking shit about, you know, the stat line wasn't any good. Like, what are we doing? You, you're missing the point. It's about the operation and how they execute. What what Drake May came in, in there and did, and he looked better than Jacoby Brissett, by the way. Oh, well, yeah, Jacoby's his little run in there that didn't look good at all. That was right, I mean, which I don't like because I don't want to see May right now. Just can I get a cup? The Patriots might be awful, and I don't. Yeah. We don't need. We don't. Not to say that Mac Jones is was ever any good or not. We will. We may never know. Although he did just have a nice preseason game with the Jags. You could fuck somebody up if it and you know if it ain't if it ain't right out there. Um, but what I saw right. from May was stepping up in the pocket, maneuvering the pocket, using the athleticism when needed, and then. Two throws to Baker, one down the sideline. That was Baker got himself pushed out of bounds, which he needs. You can't be letting that happen. That's that's day one shit. You got to fight to keep that boundary. He threw a good ball there, and then you know the, the middle one down the that Baker should have came up with. Two really good throws down the field. He had an off platform throw uh, that he made, and then he ran for the touchdown after driving him down there. All those things I thought were. You know what I saw out of May in college, and and the glimpses of good stuff that you saw out of him, and it showed up right here. And again, just like we talked about with Knicks, it ain't the stat line doesn't matter to me. It's how you operate, and how May went out there and operated is what exactly what you want to see. Now, who's it against? What are they running? I get it, but like, it, there's plenty of guys who come out there and look like what the hell's going? On? I don't even. This is this is coming at me fast. I don't know what's going on. So yeah, again, calm, yeah. cool, collected from May. Um, getting Polk involved, going to Baker hot and heavy down the field, taking shots. I, I like that. I thought the run game with, with Stevenson was working well. Had a nice screen to Stevenson. So let, kind of let everybody slide in on him and then just whoop right over there. So again, positive stuff from May. And if you all those guys, I think were May haters, right? And and this is what we've been talking about all preseason and training camp stuff long. It's confirmation bias at its best, right? Yeah, and we sure. got Trey Benson on here coming up next. So we'll talk about him. Those guys presumably don't like Drake May or had, you know, were in the process, didn't like Drake May. So it's got we got to come out here and, and stay, you know, plant our flag again. To just reconfirm that this wasn't any good from Drake May, which is a silly, silly way to go about this. Right. You have a pretty yeah, well, process and then the guy comes in and then it's OK to change your opinion. You have new information in front of you. <laughs> true, true. Well, you know, it, it's like the beat reporters have been so all over the place. One beat reporter who says Drake May looks awesome and another beat reporter who says Drake May is, you know, he's got a long way to go and he should be sitting all year. Having a long way to go and sitting all year and and looking terrible is two different things for a rookie quarterback. With the information that we're getting out of camp is just, it's, it's night and day. It's, it's, it's all over the place. And then when you go out there and you see him perform like that in preseason, like I said, it's not really about who's he going against because if we don't really know what's going on with the other team scheme on the defensive side of the ball, but the footwork, the confidence, like you said, just, just move into this, just that, that pocket presence to get that ball to deliver dubs up the middle of the field to Baker, the long throw just was smooth and not hurried. And he didn't, break out of the pocket. He didn't try to run. He didn't try to rely on that athleticism. Like, it, you know, it's great that he has it, but we'd love to, we'd much rather see him chuck a 50 yard bomb down the field right there that, you know, basically right. was a perfect throw. Not, not that anything matters in the preseason, but you said the screen to Stevenson, it was the, the old, uh, old school Jamichael hasty. that grabbed mm-hmm. that screen and ran with it for 20 something yards. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, when that name popped up, I was like, Jamichael hasty still in the league. Good for him. If there's something to hate on for Drake May, we'll, um, we'll we'll do it. But I don't see any reason why people are hating on him at this current time based on this performance. Right, right. No, good good stuff from him. So that's that that poses well for Polk, which I think I think you kind of saw it wasn't a whole lot, but you kind of saw what the usage can be like: some screens, some middle, uh, um, some 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 short to middle stuff, uh, intermediates for Polk and, 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 you know, getting down the field with Baker. It's going to be hard to keep both of those guys off the field because what else do they have? Um, so I think Definitely. that's very positive uh, for those guys. 
all positive for New England uh, in in week two, getting a little more Drake May action after it wasn't in the rain uh, in Carolina down there. So right, good other than the Brissett, Brissett needs to be positive, and it wasn't. You need that right. leader. He's that veteran, that savvy veteran that's been around the block so many times, and to not get that out of him right there wasn't great. But he could have just had an off night, and uh, the team. Yeah. We need to Brissett needs to bounce back because he's uh, right now he's still he's he's the week one starter and mm. it, like you said for May we need Brissett to be starting six ten weeks of the season. Yeah, they had the run game working with with Brissett in there, so like you said, you never know what that is. So all right, let's keep it moving here. We got Trey Benson. We just mentioned him. Uh, Cardinals. I don't think the Colts were playing any starters. Cardinals played some starters. And look, there was a lot of victory laps of, of again, the confirmation bias type shit from Trey Benson after week one. And I'm, we're like, what are we doing here? Like, it's week one of preseason for Trey Benson playing middle of the second quarter, late second quarter, presumably with backup lines all over the place. I don't know where it was in that week one. But sure, did he look a little hesitant? But everyone was like, all these runs are 10. Like, half the runs were decent. Like, he was picking up extra yards. He didn't look super comfortable. A little more yeah. comfortable this week, right? Still didn't look a thousand percent, but I don't expect him to. That's okay. It's all right. Like, you know, he went nine for 43, 4.8, had a long run of 19. I uh, thought he looked good out there. Uh, I don't think he caught any balls this week. No, he didn't. You know, at the end of the day, we were drafting Trey Benson with the idea that Connor is going to be the guy for that team for, for the year, for however long he stays healthy, because Connor was really good last year and, and he's a good player. Uh, so we didn't expect Benson to come in here and be the workhorse. We, we, we'll see some, maybe see some Benson from time to time. But then they have Michael Carter profiles pretty well as an RB three. It was ridiculous that the Jets even let that guy go. Definitely, that's a good player right there. So if if the reports out of camp are Michael Carter is playing well, that shouldn't be surprised. It's like a three year vet, four year vet that that that's a solid player. Um, and, yeah. and somebody out there is like Michael Carter. So like, Michael Carter isn't a bad player. He's not a three down bell cow. Right. And no, that's, fine. For that's sure. what, that's what Trey Benson could end and, up. And, being. But that's why that's the allure of Benson, right? It's, it's the possibility of having this backfield to himself on an offense and a team that arrow is pointing up, right? It might take another year before that happens, but, and all that's kind of baked into Trey Benson's ADP. If, if Trey Benson got drafted to the Cardinals and there was nobody else there, Trey Benson would be a, a first round draft pick in every single draft, right? right? People would be super excited about him. And then, you know, you might be a little wary of, hey, is he not playing super fast right now? But And that would be okay too if he was the starter. That's, you, you know, he's not Jonathan Taylor, but remember Jonathan Taylor, right? Um, yeah. Took a minute and everybody was like, oh, sell, 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 sell. And, <laughs> Then he was a league winner, just absolutely murked it. We know <laughs> that Trey Benson is fast. We just we know Trey Benson can catch. We just need Trey Benson to let the game come to him and speed up. And I thought better performance this week. And oddly, oddly, no victory laps on Twitter this week about Trey Benson. Crazy. Crazy. Not yet. Not yet. They got to dig something up. But I mean, you know, week one, like you said, he called a screen pass. He called a little dump off that was called back for a penalty, but he was about it was about to be a, a little mini highlight. Right. Would have had something to be able to hang our hat on there. But week one, Trey Benson might have been uh, Cosell, maybe saying, you know, the first the five carries that he got was like all different types of scheme runs. Right. You know, so it wasn't like they just gave him, you know, four or five power runs in a row. Like, hey, here's here's what you're doing. Go practice that five times in a row. It was like, here's one of these. Here's one of these. Maybe the Cardinals have no problem with his, you know, a little bit of hesitation last week either. You know, right. like they're they're seeing some stuff, seeing some stuff on tape in college, seeing some stuff in co- in practice. It's like, all right, well, let's go show him this in a game. So we got this tape to go back and teach off of it this week. And then, like you said, guess what happens this week? Looks a little better, which is which is really what you want. You don't want him to have to, you know, go out there and have nine carries for minus eight yards. Then we have a problem, right? You know, so yeah, let's go. Now, and, and, and you know. Like you said, that's a good that's a good point by Cosell and a, and a good good way to bring that back. He did do a lot of different things, and it's like he, he had he had the outside run to the toss or whatever, and it was like yeah, his angle got cut off, and he tried to go back and, and got tackled and slipped. But anyway, not worried about Trey Benson. You're okay if if people are hating on him, they already didn't like him, so that's all right. You know, just, exactly. Just know that that's what that is, um, and then we can and we can kind of keep it moving here. Uh, we did have uh, an announcement in house. We have. The FFD guys joining uh, FFPC for the remaining remainder of the offseason and, and into next uh, season. So that'll be a lot of fun. But 
what we're doing uh, before the season starts is we want to come out here and we want to fill up a hundred dollar buy in dynasty league on myffpc.com versus me and Big Co on a 60 second fast draft clock. And I want you to guys to either email us at the FF Dynasty um, at gmail.com or you can find us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you want to join this league. We'll fill it up. It's going to be a fast draft, which means it's 60 seconds per pick. So there's not a lot of trading that goes on. You might be able to trade a little beforehand, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it'll be a hundred bucks and you get to play against us. Uh, you can use promo code FFD at sign up and you can use that at any juncture that you want, whatever you're playing, best ball, dynasty, redraft over there. They got it all for you. Once you've run out of friends to play with, it's the best site you could possibly have because they dynasty league never goes under, right? New users get $25 off at checkout. But yeah, come come draft with us, get in a, get in a draft with us and, and we'll draft the team and then that team will live on and we can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we'll probably do a show about it. Uh, film the whole thing, the 60 second clock, and, and then publish that out there uh, for your pleasure. All right, uh, let's keep it moving here. I think Xavier Worthy pretty much has now cemented himself into, hey, you maybe were worried about this guy getting ragdolled. Uh, well, the opposite effect of that is exactly what he came out here and did this week. Just caught a bomb uh, from Wentz, caught another pass, I believe, from uh, Mahomes. Looked great out there. He's going to be a big problem in this offense. Xavier Worthy is is right now being, uh, I think, a huge return on your investment. It doesn't appear that Rashi Rice will be suspended this year. It might it might be next year when Rashi Rice gets suspended. So you might not get any suspension Rashi Rice this year, or maybe it's at the end of the year. But all signs point to Rashi maybe being around. Now Hollywood's going to miss a chunk of time. He might be out for a week or two to start the season, and then maybe an additional week to make sure he's right. That's good for how that's good for Xavier Worthy's stock, but. We've been big fans of Xavier Worthy over here, so you know we're not outside of the confirmation bias uh, light here. But but Xavier <laughs> out there playing really well uh, in the preseason in in week two here. I thought that was a you know somebody who's if you were worried about a stock, I don't think that you should be. No question. I mean, uh, like you said, they've the uh, the practice practice video of him getting pushed down at the line that time went had its they had their fun with that. But uh, it, from the get go, just a guy that can work in short, tight spaces in the red zone, get open in the end zone. And obviously the one of the fastest guys in the league when he steps on the field week one. Uh, those are just rep recipes uh, for disaster for defenses. And you put him on a team with Patrick Mahomes and a team that's coming into this year who were frustrated last year with their offensive performance. Obviously, they wanted to. Super Bowl back to back champions, but it's absolutely crazy to say a team won the Super Bowl last year and they are they got a chip on their shoulder. It's out, it's outrageous. I don't know if it's ever happened. And yeah. offensively, I mean, defensively, they crushed it. Uh, and offensively, and through the playoffs, Patrick Mahomes and this and the scheme and the and the play calls and Travis Kelsey and and Rasheed Rice and offensive line. Pacheco, they did their thing to march through the playoffs and earn that Super Bowl ring. But we, nobody in fantasy football was super thrilled with hardly anything going on with the Chiefs last year in the regular season. And that in turns leaves Patrick Mahomes saying, we're going to be better this year. And, uh, and, and I don't think it's going to be fun for NFL defenses this year or going against no. the Chiefs. When you bring in Worthy, obviously Hollywood Brown's going to miss some time. But when he gets back, that's just uh, like, two set that's just like elite speed times two on the field right with well, that what, scheme you, you you just you bring the vertical attack back where they've been a, they've been forced to kind of let Patrick Mahomes be the point guard and and manage this thing where now it's like the defense is really good uh or at least they have been uh, they, you know they've lost a few pieces here and there but uh, been a very solid unit Spags is great and then of course you have Reed on the other side you have Mahomes on this side Kelsey's still here Rice is, is, you know, I, I think a, a great fit on this offense, and I think they're figuring out exactly how to use him, uh, what he's good at. Uh, I see some people kind of really hating on Rashi Rice about how being a short yardage screen merchant, yada, yada, but Rashi Rice is fucking good. You, again, I think you were probably just wrong about Rashi Rice, so you're still hanging on to it. And it's like, <laughs> it's all right. Rashi's probably the best buy you could probably buy right now. Um, we've said it almost every episode that Rashi Rice gets brought up because people are so worried about the suspension and it's going to happen at some point, I'm sure. But it seems like everything's pointing to uh, maybe even next year at this point from where the litigation is going to kind of take place. So 
great point before you get going. I mean, if you you take that, if we just talked about getting on FFPC and starting a dynasty league with us, dynasty startup, grabbing Rasheed Rice and Xavier Worthy right now, and the same dynasty team is a like high end thought process, I believe, mm. because like Rasheed Rice would no no suspension in tow, uh, no potential suspension in tow is a is way up the boards, and then Xavier Worthy is just like. When this thing all pans out, he's he could be. I don't see him as being Tyreek Hill 2.0 because I just don't. I mean, obviously the speed and everything, but I don't see him just like he. I think I feel like he'd have to put on like 18 pounds of muscle yeah. and become like has to have a boxer's mentality. But yeah. he doesn't play down to his size. He he's very competitive. He's very scrappy for as small as he is. Sure. Um. I don't. I I think calling him. Tyreek Hill 2.0 is like a little bit disrespectful to what Tyreek Hill's done on a toughness scale in the NFL, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but obviously what he's going to do to stress, stress defenses, that's, that could easily be Tyreek Hill 2.0, uh, just yeah. whether or not he can handle it a hundred and, you know, a hundred catches a year for eight straight years like Tyreek Hill did. That's another story. Getting those two receivers right now in a dynasty startup and not having to take either one of them before you get out of probably the fifth round. Is outrageous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, right now in our ADP, it's it's like sixth, seventh round for for those. That's guys. what I mean. Like it's if excellent. you if you got five players, if you got five players on your team, and then you can put a a Chiefs wide receiver, receive Rashi Rice or Xavier Worthy on your team, and then if you only get one of those because of the way the draft works out, and you catch your Mar- Marquise Brown in the ninth on the way out mm. the back door, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of fun there. All right, now yeah. let's keep it moving. Let's talk Jaden Daniels real quick. I don't need to spend a lot of time here. I thought he was good, operated the offense well, did did some little things, moved him up and down the field, could have slid on a play. Didn't, you know, didn't need to take the contact. But I think Jaden, you know, I think I think they got themselves a quarterback. I don't know how good the commanders are gonna be this year per se. Uh, but Terry's gonna be just fine. I could pretty much tell you that. Terry's gonna have a real nice year. You're gonna get your uh, ROI on Terry McLaurin for sure. Jaden mm, Daniels, well you know, maybe, you know, a little up and down fantasy wise each week. There's probably an okay floor there. And sometimes the ceiling is going to be outstanding, but I'm sure there's right. going to be some growing pain games here and there, but Terry's most likely going to be just fine in, in most games who the rest of that squad is through there. I'd love for it to be Jahan Dotson. Not sure if it will be or not. Gus Bradley's talking crazy. Doesn't seem, I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. Talking about Zacharias or what, what are we doing? Uh, come on. <laughs> You know, LMC, great, great stab in your, in your rookie drafts there. Grab grab Luke McCaffrey where, where you can. Uh, love Senate. So a lot of fun stuff over there. Uh, sure. But I'm not sure the commanders are quite ready to go. But uh, Jaden Daniels operating the offense in, in week two of the preseason really well. Keep it moving to Caleb Williams here. Thought Caleb was, was um, pretty good in this one. Uh, but... You know, obviously the big highlights came in this one. Uh, you, you saw the, the crazy run that was like he ran for 42 yards for a seven yard touchdown or whatever. And look, look, Justin Fields did this stuff. Right. And then I, I didn't realize there were so many people who were just big Justin Fields stands about and really still upset that they let Justin Fields go. And I'm like, but he had three years, four years there. And it just it he couldn't do the little things. Right. It's It's yeah. not about the runs, the runs are exceptional. Like no, who's doubting that. And I'm sure the, some of the plays that Caleb made in this game fields, you could find a fields play. That's the same. It's just that the eyes don't come from their downfield. He's yeah. trying to make a play. It's a, it's an off platform dime to Roma Dunze, you know, on the sideline. And then almost dime. another touchdown. You know? dropped it. I mean, just a perfect pass. You wouldn't have thought that he sat there with zero pressure and was basically laying it up in seven on seven drills. Like there was no defensive line. That was 45 right. yards downfield to, over the shoulder to Dunze with calamity going on before he released the pass. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, and, and I, I get it fields people that the situation is much better than what fields walk into. It is, there's no, there's no denying that, but uh, they they had enough looks at fields, and I just I feel like the processing isn't where it needs to be with fields, and I think the processing is crazy with Caleb Williams. Um, I, I think he's yeah. just he's looking to make make the throw where fields as soon as there's pressure, eyes go down. He's moving around. He's looking to run. Caleb, you know, and it's you know I'm not I I don't hate Justin Fields by any means, um, but I think this is this is the curse is broken. We came on here last week and said it. I'm going to say it again. I, I think this was a home run. I think the Bears figured it out. I love this Adunze Caleb stack for the next 
you know, eight years is going to be so much fun to watch. Uh, I'm real excited to see this whole operation kind of moving forward. I've been saying uh, I love the Titans are my most interesting watch. I'm you're going to have to watch the Bears every damn week. You know, it's going to be must see TV. Uh, completely agree. And you know what I also like that I really didn't put out there before? Um, I, we talked about it, obviously, but re-signing DJ Moore, giving him the money mm. he was due, mm -hmm. just basically just says, we're not going to take any chances on our number one quarterback here, the future of our franchise. You know, we're not going to have one injury at wide receiver and be in trouble. Right. You know, and that's, and not only that, we're going to give him a chance to be incredible. So mm -hmm. we, we passed on some ridiculous defensive talent at one nine in the draft to bring in a Dunze. So we compare that. And then in the free, in the free agent market, bring in Keenan Allen, or maybe they even traded. It was a free agent. They traded, they traded Keenan for Allen. him. I think. I think they gave up a little something. So, I mean, surrounded the kid with just ridiculous talent at the wide receiver position paid to keep that talent in place and did, you know, sacrificed some defensive talent, but to continue, to make sure that the offensive side of the ball was moving in the right direction. Um, like you said, I'm a, I'm a Lions fan, so I really don't want to see this work out too well, but it's going to be fun to watch as, as a, as a football fan. And of course, as a, you know, knee deep dynasty fantasy football degenerate, it's going to be incredible. And I hope they lose all of their games because <laughs> I want the, because <laughs> I'm yeah. a Lions fan, but uh, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, no, I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, this week wasn't outstanding on every level for Caleb, but there was there was the wow stuff. I think last last week you saw some of the processing stuff and, and fitting it into tight windows, and and I still think uh, what I saw from Caleb was was pretty solid this week. Um, and then obviously the the wow plays were crazy. So a um, couple other quick items as we finish up this week's show. Like I said, not quite as much. Uh, movement and, and excitement through through the rookies um, of, of maybe some movement here. But I thought Ray Davis played really well uh, for the Bills, looked really good. Uh, they've got a nice one-two punch, or, or if you want to throw Allen in there, a one-two-three punch. I think I think Ray Davis is has you know moved up the rankings a little bit for me. There's that big pocket of backups with upside, and and Ray Definitely. Davis um, has has certainly moved near the top of that list for me. Um, it's no slight on Cook. I think I think Cook's going to catch a lot of passes. I think they're going to run a little more. They're going to have a, a little bit different look to the offense. The back half of the year last year, we saw it shift a little bit of kind of what they're doing. Um, you know, Curtis Samuel's probably going to have a nice little year. I think Shakir's a, a fine receiver. Kincaid's probably going to lead this team in receptions. Uh, but you know, I think Cook's going to be right there knocking on the door of of potentially you know second or third on this on this roster with catches, um, or at least yeah, he should be. You know, and, and, you know, you bring up the rookie, right? Like enough, enough has been made this year or the, after like, like the last two years, the most uh, backup quarterbacks have that have ever played. Mm -hmm. We know that the running back room turns over, you know, mm -hmm. running backs get hurt. So if cook gets hurt, I mean, this is a guy that you want on your team for as cheap as you can get him, of course. And like you said, there's a nice little stable out there of backup running backs that are talented enough to not just get washed out when the starter goes down. Um, and, and, and now this guy finds himself on that, in that list. I think he, you know, like you said, after the, after the coordinator change last year, we know what they were trying to do um, and, and establish the, a, a different mindset, obviously kind of, pulled digs out of the lead dog role for the offense and changed it. And, and, you know, Josh Allen obviously was more than ridiculous, but they leaned on the running game more. And, and I think that uh, just going forward, you know, having Ray Davis on the team helps the team as, a, as win football games. And some of that might not be good for your fantasy team for the first six or eight weeks. He could have, a, especially start ability, like in your managed leagues. If it's a best ball league, who cares? But if you have to figure out when to plug him in, he's probably safe on your bench until further notice. Yeah. But if something happens to Cook, he's probably safe in your lineup mm -hmm. until further notice. Mm -hmm. And that's a guy that you want to have on your team. Those uh, those backup running backs are solid uh, to have as you navigate through the season. And Ray Davis has now uh, put himself on that list. Yeah, I liked it. So good good movement there from him. I thought Vidal came back from the dead a little bit. People were talking about getting getting cut. And maybe, maybe he still does, but ha had a good showing here against the Rams. Vidal uh, kind of bounces back a little bit. The, the, all the runs were hard and, and kind of uh, showed – you know what what you saw on tape from college um 
uh, out got more snaps and and more run than than all the other running backs that were ahead of him. I think sometimes some of these beat reporters get a little hasty on some shit, and you know we'll see where Vidal lands. We'll see if he is the cut guy. Uh, but I thought that was a good showing for him. So maybe just reestablish a little foothold for him. Jordan Whittingham in that same game does it again. I mean, this is this is locked and loaded. Got to have this guy. You know, I, I I would even venture to say I, I might try to figure out how to trade a third just in case. If this turns into just another, you know, he looks great. They, they just did it last year. This is a good offense. Cooper Cup's 30, 30, 31. Uh, now Stafford's, yeah. you know, we don't know how long we're going to get from Stafford. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Stafford's only like six months older than Kirk Cousins. And nobody's like, Kirk Cousins is retiring next year. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, everyone's trying to retire Stafford and nobody's, you know, what I mean? uh, shout out to Big D on that one. Uh, but Whittingham looks looks the part, man. He he, he looks explosive. Uh, they've got him involved in the last two two preseason games, um, and and I like what what you're seeing there. So you got to be excited about him if you have any rookie drafts that haven't happened. Um, I, you know, you get into that mid third, you might you might be looking at Whittingham, right? Whittingham, the old hard to come by wide receiver handcuff, right? Mm. Uh, you know, you it's an <laughs> obvious peck in order. You got as you know, as long as Cooper Cup's healthy right now, that's the you know that's everybody's uh, kind of key phrase. They're hanging their hat on the last couple of weeks. He's healthy right now, and he is. Um, so as long as Cooper Cup's healthy, it's Cooper and Puka and Kyron. And I you mean, know, Demarcus I, Robinson has had some good runs on this offense, you know? Oh, he crushed it down the stretch last year. That's so I was, it's those guys. And then Demarcus Robinson, I don't think the rookie shows well in two preseason games and comes in and pushes Demarcus Robinson out of that red zone role that he had down the stretch last year. And they paid him this year to make sure he stayed around. Mm-hmm. So it's just quality depth on a quality team and a quality organization with a, a high quality scheme that you can depend on. So yeah, they'll, they'll if, give you know, him the shots to see what they got. I think, you know, and, well, yeah, but I, I, you know, and this is a guy. But I, I, I agree. He would he would be nowhere near your starting lineup, but he's the guy that you want on your dynasty team. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. And uh, you know what? It, I, I know I, I'll save that to the next. It's uh, it's a uh, Whittingham. Uh, we'll we'll talk about him more on another show. Uh, because I I don't want to get I don't want to go over time here and, and get blasted for it. So I'll, we'll we'll save we'll I'll table that. Yeah, uh, Whittington. Sorry, not Whittingham. Got 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 a, got it in my notes wrong. So Whittington, Whittington, Whittington. Got it. Last but not least, I thought Mac Jones, or rather, uh, I thought AOC played a better game than than Minshew. But Minshew gets uh, the nod for the Raiders. What does that What does that do for you uh, for the Raiders players? Is that I think Devontae, That's got to give you a nice little boost because we saw what he did with Pittman last year and just target hogged uh, Pittman a good bit. Um, does that worry you for the rest of that offense? You think he'll spread it out a little more? You, you, good, bad, and different on Minshew being the starter for the Raiders. It's it's twofold. I, I think initially, first, I think it's it's bad for the team because uh, I think they wanted AOC to take the next step um, as an actual like potentially like full field quarterback. Um, but I think it's good for the fact that the ball's going to come out. I, I mean, Minshew's going to make his mistakes. And stuff like that, but there was times last year where where Aiden O'Connell was just kind of gun shy and wasn't uh, trusting his eyes and wasn't letting it rip. And there was times when he did, and it looked good. And there was times when it did, and he looked like a rookie. And it looked like a rookie whose name we didn't know before he got to the preseason and tore it up. Well, for a reason, you know. Um, but uh, Minshew's just courageous. You know, to a fault to us in some some instances, and obviously Shane Steichen had a lot to do with that was the play calling and some of his the Minshew stats last year was a lot of RPO first read only read one read rip it you know to um what's his name the Colts wide receiver Pittman, Pitt, Pittman you know so and obviously Devontae Adams here uh so I think that the I, th- I think it's a good thing that the ball's gonna be released I think the balls I think there's gonna be plenty of attempts. In a, in a run first system is it's kind of a tongue twister as just that sounds like I don't think they're going to throw it. They're not going to chuck it 40 times, but the called pass plays, you know, I think Gardner issue is going to give guys a chance um, as far as instead of like, you know, Aiden O'Connell just being a little, it just seems a little bit shy, you know, and gun and, and Minshew's the opposite of that. I feel like he's more of a, I'm going to sling it. And if it works out great. And if it doesn't, I'm not even supposed to be here. 
Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. As far as, you know, AOC kind of seems like he's trying to protect a job he really doesn't have. And Minshew's like YOLO every time, like Jameis Winston esque almost, you know, not, not quite that good, but you know what I mean? Right. So I, I, right. I think, I think it's gotta be a good thing and it's gotta be a bad thing. I think that just pay, it puts a potential ceiling, but I think it raises the floor. I think it was, a, I think it's probably the best play for Pierce to keep his job. Right. Absolutely. Think, definitely. Know. Cause if a couple things go right, I think you could develop AOC and then they might get, and he might be all right. And, and, but they fire him because of the win loss record. I think Gardner probably gives you a better chance to win more games uh, because of, you know, the nature of how he plays the position. Um, And I think their defense was pretty good last year. We'll see how it, how it is again this year. Uh, Yeah. I mean, you think about, I I completely, I I completely agree with everything you just said, but we're talking about a, a, a first time head coach or, you know, held over from, yeah. you know, from middle of he's the only season, getting a year, Bo. He's only getting a year, but like he didn't draft AOC. Yeah. And you're talking about developing a quarterback we never heard of before he got here and started looking good in the preseason. It's not like you're talking about, oh, maybe he can develop Drake May. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. You're talking about trying to develop a, a, a Aiden O'Connell. Like I never heard of the kid, yeah. right? So, and then, and then you bring in Gardner Mishu. He's supposed to try to save Pierce's job. It's, yeah. You know, he didn't, Pierce didn't run Derek Carr out of town, you know, right. and Jimmy G was benched before Pierce even got to be the quarterback. The yeah, coach Devontae last Adams year. was having none of that. <laughs> right. So what in the, what, what did Pierce yeah. do? No, no, I, I, I'm not, I, I agree with you. I just, I feel like, it just feels like he's going to be the scapegoat and they're going to go another way, draft a quarterback and bring another coach in. I, I just, I've seen this story a million times in the NFL. It seems like, Oh, we all have. Yeah. If, if Pierce, I mean, obviously, yeah, if Pierce, not that it's out, fair to be, Pierce, you know, no, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't be fair. It, 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 he would be the outlier, but I think it's undeniable. He's a leader of men and a great, you know, motivator. And there's a lot of good, ki- good coaches like that, you know, so mm-hmm. he could be one. And I, I think it might Keep pay off sure. for the Raiders that they could be patient and may, yeah. bring in, maybe bring in a high upside, you know, a high end, um, uh, offensive game plan kind of coach to run with him. Yeah. If they got a quarterback. You know, yeah, it'd be, it'd be, you know, if, if, if Kirk became available or Dak becomes mm-hmm. available next year, Raiders could be in, in, you know, big players in that, in that game. Uh, but w- one, one guy on the Raiders in particular, I mentioned him last week and I'm going to mention him again. Trey Tucker seems like he's ready to explode, man. Like, obviously I don't know if they can facilitate it with Myers and, and Bowers and, and Mayer maybe coming along and, but Trey Tucker looks like he's going to be field stretching. He looks explosive. Um, you know, just keep him in your back pocket on a rock. Don't be cutting Trey Tucker. Like FFPC, you probably got no business having Trey Tucker on your team. But anything right. with a deeper bench, Trey Tucker, just set it and forget it. The old, the old, uh, what was that? The Ronco uh, oven thing. That was an infomercial at like two in the morning. <laughs> His whole tagline was set it and they all just forget it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just put him on the bot, put him on your 35th roster spot, right? Yeah. Just I, I, there's, I think there's something there. Looks, looks, looks like he's got the juice. I, I got him in a bunch of spots from the, the end of the year last year, being a rookie where he showed a little bit and he just seemed like he picked right up where he left off. And that's not always the case, right? Sometimes you see a little juice at the end of the year and you're like, Oh, this guy's fun. And then, but man, he's, he's been nice through these, these last two games. Um, so like what I saw from, from Trey Tucker, anything else this, this week uh, that you want to get to big co before we get out of here? No, I think I'm good. I think uh, I think you brought up some really good points, and uh, it like I said, we'll there'll be uh, most likely hardly anything to talk about next week for preseason because mm-hmm. all the teams will shut it down and they'll try to get a week one healthy. Um, but we'll uh, we'll do a fun draft with some guys on FFPC, and yeah, and we'll have a good video about that, and then we'll be looking for week one. Yeah, hit us up uh, Gmail. The uh, email address is the FF Dynasty at Gmail dot com. Twitter at the FF Dynasty, shoot us a DM. We'd love to fill up a league and have some fun, 100 bucks, FFPC, film the whole thing, um, and 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 have a good Dynasty League for for years to come. And and the trading will commence as soon as the se- the, uh, the draft's over, 60-second clock. So it's a whole lot of fun. You don't have to worry about all the uh, all the drafting and, and trading and all the, you know, how long it takes and being tied to your phone. You sit down once, bang, you knock it out. It might seem a little silly to do a Dynasty League that way, but trust me, it's a lot of fun. Well, that's a great point.
that it takes two or three weeks and you have to be present or you're going to miss out on the opportunity. So it is a little bit different. You sit down, you got a 60 second clock, but you're not going to miss anything. You pick your team. And then when the team's, when the draft's done, you can start trading, but you don't have to spend like two weeks, like really trying Mm -hmm. to be focused in on it. Or, you know, you, Hey, do I trade up here? Do I trade back here? And then trying to put a trade together. Like that's very intense, especially for, you know, the first week. Um, it's oh, very sure. intense and it's a lot of fun. It's the best part of it. But the 60 second, I, I've, you know, I've done one and it's a good time because just you're in and you're out and you have a dynasty team and you didn't have to worry about it for a week and a half. Yeah. All right. The promo code is FFD for $25 off at checkout. And that that's good for any league across FF or my FFPC, whether it's redraft best ball or dynasty. So come check us out. We'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to five star review subscribe give me some uh, chit chat under and, and tell me that we messed up Whittingham's name I'm sure somebody already did in the comments but you know it's Whittington I got it I got it sorry uh, <laughs> we'll, catch you, we'll catch you next time peace <laughs>